listen, we are talking about taking your life back. We're talking about um, not operating in fear. We're talking about being in a position where we are able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we could think or ask. So tonight we're talking about no fear, no limits, no excuses. No fear, no limits, no excuses. So I talked about this a little earlier today, Daryl, on my Facebook Live, and I actually preached it on Sunday, but I wanted to kind of go back into it because one of the things that people struggle with is fear. Daryl, why they be scared? Listen, why are you scared? You know, fear is real. Listen, it's not real. It's false evidence appearing real. Come on now. Yeah, but it's real in people's hearts. That's yes, and once it catches a hold of it, it's, hard to, it's hard to shake it for them. But listen, you guys, we're going to talk about how you can begin to shake that fear that grips your heart, that grips your soul, that prevents you from truly being as great as God has ordained for you to be. Because listen, this is a no fear zone. No fear. Who can't be scared rolling with us? Daryl. I'm scared. No, no. You got to go back. You see, that's why Harriet Tubman <laughs> killed people. See what I'm saying? She just shot them dead. Huh? Shot them dead. You can't go. Yo, scary ass can't go. You can't go. <laughs> oh you can't go. You can't go. You too scary. Oh, my, my. You too scary. Scary people will mess around and get you hurt. They will. See, have you ever noticed that scary people are the main ones to talk the most trash? A situation will come up and they'll be talking trash and they'll be talking and talking and talking and talking and talking and talking. But when it comes time for something to go down, they the first ones to run and hide. How you going to be scary and talking trash? They scared. Daryl, no, you, you cannot be. You cannot be. And then this is the thing. God has not given us a spirit of fear. He's not giving us a spirit of fear. Fear is not a part of what it is that God has and put in us. And so if God hasn't given us a spirit of fear and you have a spirit of fear on you, where did it come from? It either came from the enemy or the inner me that, that evoked that fear. Cause it did not come from God ain't scared. Now nah, he ain't never scared. Oh, never. My, my, my. He's never scared. Mm. Now, listen, he might see some situations and be like, man, it's just could have gone a little different. But everybody got to die now. I just got to <laughs> wipe the whole humanity out. Oh, I just I, I just got to do what I got to do. And if you'll notice in scriptures, God was always in a place where he did what he had to do. Mm. And he told the people, do what you have to do. Even Jesus, Jesus wasn't even scared when he was getting ready to be set up, mm. persecuted, mm. crucified. Mm. He knew Judas was going to betray him. And what did he say? He didn't say, oh, Judas, don't betray me. He said, listen, do what you must, but do it quickly. Is that what he said? Do what you must. But do it quickly. But do it quickly. Do what you gonna do quick. Do it quick. Don't drag it out. Yeah. Don't get scared now. Mm. Just go on and do what you gotta do. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't because he did not understand the consequences of what was getting ready to happen. He absolutely knew what was coming. He did, didn't he? But he wasn't scared. When they would surround him. And they would be like, oh, we getting Jesus. We getting Jesus. Jesus being there like, okay, listen. Okay, whatever. And because it wasn't his time, he just slide out. Slide to the left. Slide to the right. Crisscross. Listen, he do whatever he needed to do. He would just slide on out. They'd be like, where'd he go? Where'd he go? Where'd he go? He was gone. Even when it came to them telling him that, th that he needed to give an answer for stuff. Listen. You only have to give an answer to people that are your boss. And his boss was God. He didn't have to answer to them. That's why he just stood there and looked at them. What? Thou hast nothing to say for thine self? Jesus is looking at him like this. Crickets. 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 Who are you talking to? But he didn't feel like he had to prove a point. Well, let me let me just say this. We're streaming live on YouTube. Hey, YouTube. Here's the problem. What's the problem? 
I'm streaming from my personal account. Daryl, I'm not fooling with you. <laughs> no, I'm not. That, listen. I'm da- like, what is going da- on? Daryl is doing too I'm much, like, y'all. I'm streaming from my personal account, not from In Touch News. I, I'm like, why isn't this thing trying to sh- I can't share it. Daryl. So that's what it is. So so to all the listeners out there, you know, just, just tune in to... Uh, in touch radio in, at intouchnews.com mm-hmm. until I can fix this. I, I'll have to listen, it break. y'all. That's listen, Daryl is listen. Look, <laughs> he he off his game. See, this is what happened when he don't have me around every week, every day. Listen, he get all off kilter and off his game. Yeah, we got to get his man kilter. back right. See, he needed this message tonight. I had to tell him. Don't be scared. I went to church yesterday. You did? I did. Good. Yes, yes. And you got a word from the Lord? I got a word from the Lord. What did he say? He said, you know, bring Dr. V back. (laughs) 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 So I can get on kilter. (laughs) I'm trying to tell y'all because y'all know Daryl would be taking notes. Here you come. Walk through the door. I said, thank you, Lord. (laughs) Hey, (laughs) Daryl. It's just me and you oh, this week. Yes, yes, yes. But seriously, Jesus did not feel like y'all and, and and we do though. Sometimes we feel like we gotta gotta prove a point to people. We gotta show them something. But I just came to tell somebody. Listen, I just came to tell somebody that you do not have to prove a point. You don't have to answer them. You don't have to allow what they say to bother you. You don't have to do any of that. None of that. None of that. You ain't got to do none of that. See, when, when you know that people are in a position or they're getting ready to, um, to, to do something to you, honey, listen, tell them, do what you must. But what, Daryl? But make it quick. Do it quickly. <laughs> Don't drag it out. Just do what you must, but do it quick. Listen, that's what I told a bill collector yesterday. Did I you? said, listen, this is what I told him. I said, listen, this is what I can pay you. Mm-hmm. I understand it's my debt. Mm-hmm. I want to pay my debt off. Mm-hmm. This is what I can pay. And they said, well, we can't we can't use that for an arrangement because it's not enough money. So what you're telling me is you're not going to take my money? Is that what you're telling me? Well, no, what we're saying is it's not enough to make a payment arrangement. Now, listen, I'm trying to do right, right? Right, right, right. Listen, if you can't take that to make the payment, then do what you must, mm. but do it quickly. Wow. So were they knocking on your door before you hung the phone up? No, they weren't knocking on my door. Okay. And I wasn't scared. So we have a tendency to let bill collectors create fear in our heart. Yeah. You look at the phone and I'm like, oh, man, should I answer it? Should I answer it? Come on, Daryl. Should I answer it? No, I'm going to answer it. I'm going to tell you what I can do, what I can't do. Mm -hmm. Either you can take this or you cannot take this. Mm -hmm. So, well, ma'am, I'm not saying that we won't take your money. If you take my money... Mm -hmm then you have made an agreement with me. See, I know that. Okay. If they take a payment for, from you for a certain amount of money mm-hmm. and they cash that payment, that says that they have entered into an agreement with you. So what happened to the fear that used to linger? Listen, I ain't got time to be scared. Listen, I got what I got. I don't have what I don't have and you can't get what I don't have. But what I can do is make a, a good faith payment. Okay. This is the payment of good faith. Well, ma'am, that's not enough money. Well, ma'am, that's what I have that's for what you. I got. That's what I have for you. Because mm. see, what they'll do is they'll try to make you feel like you got to give them everything you've got. That is a lie. First of all, the debt has already been paid because the company charged it off. Mm-hmm. They got their money. Absolutely. They wrote it off. Mm-hmm. They good. Mm-hmm. Now somebody else bought the debt. Mm-hmm. And now they want to collect mm-hmm. on the debt. So did they get nasty with you? Um, you know, that she, used to be their tactic. Yes, yes, it, it did, and sometimes it can be. Um, she didn't get real nasty, but she got a little attitude because I was not budging. Okay. I'm not scared, ma'am. Okay. I'm not scared. Was it a sister? It wasn't. Okay. It wasn't. It wasn't. You know, but, you know, when we understand who we are in God and we stand in our God-given authority mm-hmm. and we know that we're standing on the side of right, I'm trying to do right. I'm trying to do right. And because I'm trying to do right, you're telling me it ain't enough. 
Mm. Well, listen, it's what I have. It's what okay. I can do. This is what I can do. Now, we can work with it. We can not work with it. Mm. But, but you know, I would like to work with it. That would be my preference. That would be my preference. Okay. Just mine. But see, I had to get over that fear. You know, that fear is what will cause you to have your kids telling people that you ain't at home or somebody call your phone and you answer the phone. And then all of a sudden you start speaking Spanish and you don't know no Spanish. I'm like, no, I'm not English. <laughs> not you, no. She no is no way, here. Not you. Come on now. <laughs> oh, man. Dear, but we can't do that. True that. And see, that's what the word of God came in our lives to do is free us from a spirit of fear. Mm. Fear is a spirit. It and is. it jumps from person to person. If you're around scary people, they'll have you feeling scared. You're trying to tell me fear is a spirit? It is a spirit. Where is that? Show me that. It is a spirit. You got to prove that. God has that. not given us the spirit, spirit of, fear. of fear. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. I'll take it. It's that. a spirit. And when you're around scary people, that spirit try to jump on you. And if you're around enough scary people, it will jump on you. And then all of a sudden, their fears will become yours. Have you ever been around some? See, that spirit got in your phone. It did. Did I touch that phone? No, you didn't. It just started talking. You know why? Why? Because it tried to provoke a spirit of fear. It did. Wow. Because you look like, what is that? What's going on? I ain't scared. <laughs> Is Listen. That, is that why you got that hammer in your hand? Sure, I ain't scared. You about Listen. to beat my phone to death. Listen. I mean, it just started playing. It just, it like, just started it playing. Just started playing. Because we talked about the spirit. You, you're right. You, you know these phones listen to you anyway. They do. Yeah. They do. They do. And you know I'm on the list. What list? The, the watch list. What <laughs> Them watch radical list? black people right. list. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> but seriously, mm -hmm. when you're around scary people, someone who has a lot of fears, they'll begin to project those fears on you. Really? Yes. If you've ever noticed people who oftentimes people who have been the victims of sexual molestation and incest, wow. they'll transfer that fear onto their children. Wow. They'll teach them to be afraid, Brave. not to be wise, not to be discerning, not to be aware, mm. but to be afraid. And that fear will have them where they, they, they're scared to go anywhere. They're, they're scared to be around people. They're, they're, they're scared. And that's not what God wants. God definitely wants us to walk in discernment. He wants us to be aware. He wants us to be conscious. Mm. Um, he doesn't want us to unnecessarily put ourselves in unsafe positions. But he also does not want us to be afraid. Well said. You know, we don't have to be scared. I serve a God that is, listen, it, the word of God says, and if God be for you, he is more than the whole world against you. Wow. That's mm. big stuff. That's big stuff. That's real big stuff. So if he's more than the whole world against us, then why are we scared? There is mm. nothing to fear. And so many times there are so many scriptures that say what? Fear not. Hmm. Fear, fear not. not. Fear not. Yeah. Fear not. Fear. Why does that come up so much? Because mm. that spirit of fear was running rampant and people just scared. Mm. God, I don't know. Can I do it? That spirit of fear is, is prevalent right now. It is. We got a guy that, that promotes fear. Promotes fear. Yeah. And provokes fear. Provokes fear. Yes. He's somewhere up there in Washington, D.C. We ain't going to call no names. I ain't calling no names. We ain't going to call no names. He's around that area. Just in that area, he right? Might, he, he might live in a big old white house. I'm not sure. A big old white is. house. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. It could be white. Uh-huh. But I just know that <laughs> that person is promoting a lot of fear. A lot of fear. And people are afraid. And people are afraid. And people are afraid of the wrong things and the wrong people. Okay. See, listen, this is the thing that blows my mind. The fear that's being provoked through a lot of the things that are said and the things that are put out, it, it blows my mind because when you look at mass shootings, when you look mm -hmm. at school shootings, when you look at gun violence, it's not coming from the people that others say you should be afraid of. It's not. Okay. Typically, those shootings are done by white males. Yes, true. But what's happened is the media and society has provoked this fear of black males. Mm. 
a fear that's so great that a, an officer can see a black male and be so scared that he shoots just on sight. Because yeah. it's, it's, it's something in his pocket. Mm. It's a cell phone. You know, I don't believe that. It's a pack of candy. I, I don't believe that. You know what I believe? What you believe, Daryl? I believe that a lot of white officers are looking for a kill. Mm. I believe that a lot of white officers are looking for their first kill. Mm. Now, I know that's a little harsh, but I'm telling you, that is the spirit that I see in them. Now, now no, I would no, say no, with some no, of them. Now, no, wait a minute. I, I hear on. you. Okay. And I'm not, I'm not, this, this is not a blanket across right. all white police officers. Right. I'm just saying. Yes. That some of them uh -huh. have that spirit. I, I would say that. I've seen would, it myself. Yeah, I would I've say that. I've experienced it myself. Mm -hmm. And so they're looking mm -hmm. for their first kill. But some of them are just scared. Mm, okay. I, 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 seriously. Some okay. of them are scared. Right. But, but you but, shouldn't be a police officer and you're scared. Just like you said. I I'm telling you, you should not be a police officer and you scared because scary people do crazy things. Well, and here's the other thing. I, I, I can't believe that they are afraid. Oh, my goodness. Now, I'm, and here's why. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> when you become a police officer, mm -hmm. you are trained in self-defense. You are. You're trained how to use a gun. You are. You're trained how to de-escalate a situation. Yes. You're trained in all these things. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so... Uh, the one thing that they're not trained in mm -hmm. is fear. Most police officers have a lot of courage, are brave uh, citizens. Okay. Okay. But I'm going to stop you right stop there. Stop me. Let me tell you why. A tell lot of times why. those people who decide to go into, uh, the, into law enforcement are people who were bullied. Okay. Who were scary. Okay. And they're looking for something. To give them a sense of courage. But underneath it all, you still scared. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, you guys, we're going to take a, a break and we'll be right back with more of Take Your Life Back. K-O-G-I-C style right here on In Touch Radio, Reality Radio, where everyone's a star. Stay with us. Don't go anywhere and let someone know they need to tune in. We'll be back. Funeral Home, providing the highest quality, professional, and caring service for your family. Call Jeffrey Rhodes at 813-253-3419. That's 813-253-3419. Or visit him at 301 North Howard Avenue, Tampa, Florida. Ray Williams Funeral Home, for the finest care and quality service. This is Dale Day. Join me every Monday at 7 p.m. for Jazz at Miss Connie's House. Bringing you the smoothest jazz and the coolest guests. Right here on In Touch Radio. My name is Gil Sampson. I didn't come from a very rich family, and so paying for college would have been very tough. I don't know if I would have been able to go to the college that I went to, and then I don't know if I would have gotten into the career that I am in. So I think Bright Futures has done a lot to shape my life. Uh, I got a job as a structural engineer, and I design residential buildings, commercial buildings all over the United States. Because of Bright Futures, I was able to go to college. You know, so many kids just don't even ever get that opportunity, and to be able to do it and not have any debt when I graduated is amazing, and it was all thanks to Bright futures. Florida has created more than one million jobs in only five years, and a great education connects our students to these exciting opportunities. That's why the Florida Lottery has funded Bright Futures scholarships to help over 725,000 students attend college. 
because every play is for education. The Florida Lottery. Just imagine. My name is Gil Sampson. Oh, Ricky, Ricky. So believe me, find it now, 813 Everything gon' be okay, car Ricky, he coming He take the kids to the floor to grab a pen A sun down, 184-361, Rick That's 184-361-425 Never worry from the point four, just rewind Just ask Ricky, push your boy stay by Just in case you missed it, I'ma tell you one more time 184-361, Rick by Kingdom of God International Church, where our pastors are Pastor Mary Reeves and our senior pastor is Pastor Daryl Reeves. You definitely want to come visit us at 1920 Maydale Drive right here in Tampa, Florida, where you will get a true word, listen, at some real fellowship because we keep it real, real, real. Today we're talking about um, fear. No more fear. No more fear. No more fear. We're not fooling with fear. Fear has no place. Listen, y'all, we're trying to get our minds right. So Daryl took us into law enforcement, and I'm, I'm glad that he kind of went there because it, it ties into some other things that I, I definitely want to talk about. And, and, and that is, you know, bullying produces fear, right? Now, I remember I was bullied growing up. I was bullied growing up. That's why your mic Not wasn't. You. No, you. Were. Yes, I was. You? Yes. Come on, you. You look like you were a pretty big kid growing up. I was tall. Yeah. But I was skinny, right? So let me tell you. Let okay. me tell you. So this is the thing about me. So when I was growing up, um, I was not a fighter. Like I wasn't trying to be fighting people. Like, who has time to be doing all that? I wasn't trying to fight nobody. I was too cute to fight. I'm not trying to fight. And then you got to remember, Daryl, I was the smart black girl. Mm. The smart black girl, which meant I was in the classes with all the white kids, you know. So the black people looking at me like, oh, she a sellout, you know. The black kids, the white kids looking at me, oh, she ain't quite one of us. So I didn't really fit anywhere. But I can remember people trying me, right? And I remember when I got to the point where I knew that I was going to have to prove that I wasn't scared, even though I was scared. Okay, I got a story. I was scared, right? And, but, but I had to face that fear. Mm. And so I remember I had gotten tired. You know, this girl who was my friend, you know, she had been talking about me. And, and I'm like, girl, why are you tripping over this boy that don't neither one of us go with mm. that? Like, I'm just playing. We just joke around. But we ain't in no relationship and we ain't trying to be in no relationship. But you tripping and stuff. And so she was talking trash. I said, listen, meet me at the library after school. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, that all goes down at the library. That's the only place I knew. Like, I always, I always went to the library. <laughs> Listen, go to the library. We go into the library because I go read books, right? Oh, I would be wow. in the library reading books, oh, okay? Yeah. But we're going to fight today. Meet me at the library after school. And literally, she, he met me at the library. She came yeah. down there. I went home. I changed my little shirt, put on a pajama shirt in case anything happened. I was good. <laughs> I went down there. And I remember very vividly, we standing there and she she talking, I'm talking, and then, you know, she kicks me in my stomach. Oh, my God. I said, did she kick me in my stomach? <laughs> and I doubled over, and I said, wait a minute. That's the first rule. Listen, if she was really a fighter, mm -hmm. there would have been no wait a minute. She waited. She let me catch my breath. She did. And she let me get That's up. It's called good sportsmanship. Well, 
It didn't turn out so good. It cost her. It cost her a black eye, mm. a bloody nose, and a busted lip. Because I thought I was Rocky. I immediately went back to all of the movies that I had mm. watched that involved fighting, right? And right. I became Rocky. And in my mind, I heard Rocky's theme music. Dun, 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 dun. And I stood up. And I had my dukes up. And I started jabbing. Pow, pow. Pow, pow, pow. Uppercut. Pow, 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 pow. Listen, I wasn't kicking. I wasn't doing pulling no hair. No, I, no, uh, uh-uh, uh, no. We boxing. boxing. Okay. I was boxing. Okay. I thought I was Muhammad Ali. Okay. Joe Frazier. Mm. Come on now. Mm. I was going to work. Pow, 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 pow. You look like you might be able to handle yourself. I can. Okay. I, I can fight a little bit. Okay. I try not to because okay. I don't want to hurt nobody. But I can. Yeah. Right. I, I want to stop you. Stop me. Kingdom of God International Church. 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 Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Now, why you got to bring the church up when I'm talking about fighting? <laughs> Listen, I felt like David going against Goliath, right? Mm. And it wasn't that she was a lot bigger than I was. It just was that I was not the fighter, okay? Okay. But after that day, I got a new respect level because I was willing to stand up for myself mm-hmm. and fight. Mm. Now, I wasn't afraid to fight boys. This boy stole my sweatpants. Mm-hmm. I remember I was going to fight him on the bus. He busted my lip. But I was to, to take my pants off. Those are mine. How you going to steal oh. my pants and wear them to school? Oh, yeah. You told me that. Yes. Mm. Yes. Stole your pants and wore them, and wore them on the school bus. You bold. You know, we'd have called him a sissy back then. <laughs> you doing wearing <laughs> your <old> pants. <laughs> <laughs> but they were unisex. Girl. That was some unisex sweat. But I said, this is some foolery right here. But what it did was it made me not afraid. It made That's me not good. afraid. And and so I began to develop a spirit where I was not afraid. Mm-hmm. Because what happens is every time you get scared and every time I found myself scared, I've ended up in situations that were worse than if I had just faced my fear and just stood my ground. So I've learned how to, I hate to say this in the state of Florida, but it's real. I've learned how to stand my ground and and understand that, you know, sometimes you just got to stand your ground. And the same is true with your dreams, Daryl. We get afraid with our dreams and we, we want to quit. We want to give up. We, we get, a spirit of fear because you know maybe it won't work or maybe this is not going to happen or well this happened and it doesn't look good but I'm trying to tell somebody that if you will stand your ground and stand on what God has promised you and stand on what God gave you then you will discover that you have a strength that you didn't realize you had nobody really saw me as a fighter until after that fight After that fight, they began to see me as a fighter. And I took that same fight and I took it into my life so that my senior year when my um, grandmother died and my 14-year-old brother died and then I was getting ready to go off to college, I stood my ground and I fought. I fought for my destiny. I fought for my purpose. When I got pregnant in college and... um, I knew that, you know, this was going to change the course of my life and I had to do something. I stood my ground and I took extra classes and I did what I needed to do and I fought for my scholarship. And I went in with a plan and I told them, listen, I know I'm pregnant, but this is the plan that I have. And I graduated more than a lot faster than a lot of my classmates. Mm. They had another year. I graduated in four years and a summer, you know, and so I just stood my ground. I learned how to become a fighter for my destiny and for my life. And if we would learn how to become fighters for our destiny and our life, then we wouldn't allow fear to take us out. It doesn't mean you never feel it. Mm. Doesn't mean you don't feel it. Okay. You can feel it. You just don't let it consume you. You don't let it overwhelm you. You don't let it overtake you. You learn to face it. See, courage is not the absence of fear, but it's the ability to face fear and keep moving. Oh, I like that. It's not mine, but it's good. It's good. (laughs) Courage is not the absence of fear, but it is the ability to face fear and keep moving. And so we've got to learn that even though you may feel some fear, Mm -hmm. do it scared. Okay. Because if you do it scared, you're going to get over your fear. Okay. 
So you don't let the fear overtake you. Mm -hmm. You use the fear to fuel you. Mm. See, fear produces endorphins. Endorphins produce surges of energy and right. strength. Mm. And those endorphins are what allowed me to win that fight. Mm. I said, oh, she finna whoop me. Mm. Oh, no, honey, hold up now. Wait a minute. We're not getting whooped. Mm -hmm. Because I knew if I got whooped that day, yeah. not only would I never live it down, but everybody would think they could beat me up. True. I've learned it in business. Yeah. You can't let people think you're scared. True. Because the moment people sense fear, they smell it. Yeah. Like in House Party, he said, he said, I smell fear. That's basically what he was saying. Wait, wait a minute. I'm trying, I'm trying to remember the scene. What was the scene? It was Bowlegged Lou in full force. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 We're going to say he smelt fear, right? Okay, that's what we're going to say. He smelt fear. Mm -hmm. Even dogs are conscious of a fear. Thing. Yeah. Most so times. when you're afraid, mm -hmm. they begin to smell that fear, yeah. and they know that they can come up on you. Yeah. So even if you feel some fear, you better not act like you're afraid. Right. Don't look scared. Yeah. Okay. You can't. Okay. And so the word of God gives us what we need to stand on. So, so we know God hasn't given us a spirit of fear. That means it came from the enemy or the inner me. Either way, it must go. Did you say enemy or inner me? The enemy or inner me. Mm. Which sometimes can be the enemy. Absolutely. Yeah. <clears throat> Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So either way, you've got to learn how to face your fear. Okay. And do it anyway. Mm. If you got to do it scared, do it scared. Okay. But do it. Okay. The key to overcoming fear is action. Action. The key to overcoming fear is action. Mm. A lack of, of action in the face of fear produces greater fear. Well, you know, I had this dream the other night. Tell me about it. The dream was uh, I was outside on my patio. Mm hmm And out there was... Um, Lions, they were resting. Mm. Lions and Rottweilers. Wow. Two Rottweilers. Wow. One of the Rottweilers was next to the lion. Uh -huh. the lions, two lions. And um, they couldn't see me, but I could see them. Mm -hmm. So I walked out of my patio. I saw them. And, of course, the spirit of fear was there. Wow. So as I turned to my left, I saw another Rottweiler coming towards me. And I t turned around to walk into the house and I realized I left my cell phone. Wow. Now, this is the dream. Wow. Now, this cell phone right here. Okay. So I go over to the table. I got enough courage. Now the dog is coming towards me. Right. I'm going towards the my dog. Cell phone. No, I'm more focused on this cell phone. Right. I grab the cell phone by this piece right here. Uh huh. And then I run on into the house. Okay. Okay, close the door, and I can look at the at the uh, dog barking at me. Dream over. But when I woke up in the middle of the night. You were scared. To, not really. I go to the bathroom, you know, do my thing in the middle mm -hmm. of the night, and I, I'm thinking to myself, I got to get back in that dream. Mm. I got to get back in that dream. Okay. Because I should not have run. Oh, my God. I'm Come so on, Daryl. I should not have run. Right. But that was my place. I this got, is my house. This, I got weapons all over the place. Right. This is mine. Yes. So I'm getting back in that dream. Now, I tried this morning. I didn't get back in. But tomorrow night, I expect it. I mean, tonight, I expect you to going be back, back in, in the dream. dream. I'm finishing this. Finish it. I'm so Finish serious. Finish it. Finish it. You all see, listen, we got to understand that the enemy will try to uh, attack us even in our dreams, right? In our dreams, it'll try to produce a spirit of fear so that we are immobilized, so that we run from what belongs to us. And we can't allow it to happen. Daryl said that he had to get back in the dream. He said, oh, I got to get back in this dream because I got to finish this. That dog ain't finna run me in the house. Come on, y'all. Stop allowing things, situations, and people to cause you to run from where you're supposed to be, from your place of position, from your place of power, and from your destiny. I ain't running. I will not run. I will not back down. You will not scare me. So, you know, listen, here's, here's what I realized. I realized that. 
I don't I don't think I was afraid of the animals because I had enough courage to go get my phone. No, it wasn't necessarily that you weren't didn't have fear of the animals. It was that your desire for your phone was greater than your fear, fear of, of the, the animals. Wow. Hey, yes. guess what you got to find? Yes, 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 yes. You got to find that thing yeah. that your desire for is greater than your fear. Yeah. That's what moves you beyond the fear. It did. Yes. It really did. Yes. Yes. So that's why you was like, hold on, wait a minute. I'm in my house. They done ran me in my house. Yeah, they done ran me in my house. Wait a minute. I'm And I'm like, I got to get back in that dream. Wow. That's good. That's good, Daryl. Mm-hmm. And you know, you all, we have the power to go back in our dreams. We do. We do. We, we do. have the power to think about that dream, meditate on that dream, go back into the dream and give it a different outcome. Give it the desired result you're looking for. That's right. Mm-hmm. And that's what we need to start doing is understanding the power that we possess, using that power and then creating the necessary changes that we need. Absolutely. Not just in our dreams, but in our lives. Absolutely. Because when we do that, then we position ourselves to be able to walk in the fullness of the goodness and the glory of God. Amen. Oh, that was some good right. stuff, you know, you Dale. Know, I, I got to get over here. I got to do my job. Yes! That was some good stuff. But think about it. Now, you know this isn't an accident. Because you just had a dream where the spirit of fear was present. Absolutely. And then I come in and we're talking about fear. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like all of that is lined up. See, God doesn't want us to allow that spirit of fear to run rampant. But see, you knew when you woke up, you said, well, wait a minute now. Something wrong with this picture. Absolutely. You know what that is? That's that Memphis in you. It's got to be. I'm telling you. Yes. That's that Memphis in you. There are certain places that people come from where there's a spirit on the city. Yeah. People from Memphis, <laughs> everybody know they crazy. People from Memphis crazy. We all crazy. <laughs> and people from Memphis crazy, right? There, there tends to be not this, not this fear, right? Right. Because you got to fight. You got to fight. If you grow up in an area where you have to fight, then you're not scared. And once you're not afraid to die, you ain't scared of nothing. Of nothing. Wow. True that. I can remember being in um, a, an abusive relationship. Mm-hmm. And I remember telling him, big as he was, listen, I was in his face like, listen, whatever you're going to do, you're going to have to kill me. Mm. I said, I'm ready to go. Are you? Mm. Because I'm not scared of you. But see, he was so used to provoking fear in women because of his size and fear in people because of his size. And, you know, he will growl and people were like, "Uh, uh, Mm -hmm. okay, okay, growl some more. I can remember that. Listen, y'all, this mm, Lord, the stories. Right. But I remember one time that he got mad at me. He was mad. Oh, he was fire hot. And he decided he was going to throw a soda can Mm. at me. And I think he thought that I was going to jump. Daryl. What you do? You caught the can? No. I watched the can hit the floor and make a mess. And I wasn't cleaning it up. Mm. I didn't jump and I did not flinch. I was not going to do that. I was not because I understood that at the end of the day, if somebody had to die, it wasn't finna be me. (laughs) I meant that. I meant that. Okay. I meant that. Okay. And he knew I meant that. Mm -hmm. And I remember a day came where I had to tell him that with a straight face. Mm -hmm. And I looked at him with my calm voice. My inside voice, the voice that no man ever wants to hear a woman use. (laughs) The inside voice, okay. Okay. And I looked at him and said, I will kill you in your sleep. Mm. Wrap your body up in a sheet. Mm. Drag it off the bed. Mm. Lay back down Mm. and go back to sleep. (laughs) Jesus. Woo, I can hear you right now calling your friend. Girl, come over here and help me. I got just chop me. I need you to help me chop him up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Daryl, <laughs> that man didn't know what to do. He didn't know what to he do. He said, you crazy. You crazy. I can't believe you said that. And I looked at him, mm-hmm. still in my calm state, mm-hmm. and said, and I meant every word of it. Mm. Wow. You know, you got me a little shake over here. Let me get this spirit <laughs> off you. Listen. You're looking at me like you might want to, you know, I'm like, wait a minute. I'm just <laughs> using you as an example, <laughs> Daryl. I know you That's had that all. look. You I, know, you know, I'm scared. You look, know I'm, I'm an look, actor. I'm scared to look at you. Nah, Don't be scared. Don't be scared. <laughs> Listen, I tell this story to my students, right? And they be like, Dr. V, you crazy. For real, you crazy. I said, Listen. I just learned that when it came to dealing with men, that sometimes as a woman, Mm -hmm. you just had to let them know, I'm not scared. Mm. But you might want to think about what you do. Right. I'm just telling you. I'm not threatening you. Yeah. I'm just saying, this is what could happen. Mm. The choice is yours. You know, I just decided that I would not allow someone to put their hands on me. Even when I was pledging there, like we made up in our mind, nobody was touching us. You're not finna touch us. We yeah. not finna get hit. None of that. Mm-mm. You what you pledge? Yes. What are you? You know I'm an AKA. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right. Y'all listen, that sound. <laughs> It's the sound that it's break time. You guys, listen, we're getting ready to take a break, but we'll be back with more Take Your Life Back after this commercial message right here on In Touch Radio, Reality Radio, where everyone is a star. Hi, this is Dr. Veronica Walters, also known as Dr. V, the head of school at the Walters Academy for Entrepreneurship, a place that we like to call where we're educating today's youthpreneurs to be tomorrow's billionaires through social entrepreneurship. Do you have a student who's bored, frustrated, gifted, inquisitive, creative, business-minded? Then maybe you need to check the way out. Listen, we have an educational platform that allows for individualized instruction. It's strength-based, project-based, and designed to help your students become the absolute best they can while starting their own business and being an entrepreneur. If you're looking for something different and you need to find a more excellent way, then you need to visit us at The Way. That's The Way, www.thewaetampa.org. Or you can call us at 813-603-7923. We look forward to showing your student a more excellent way at The Way. This is Trina Johnson with Caldwell Banker Real Estate, the real estate agent you've been looking for. If you want top dollar for your home or you're looking to make a purchase, call me at 813-244-6953. Again, 813-244-6953 and let me list your home. Hi, this is Dale Day. Join me every Monday at 7 p.m. for Jazz at Miss Connie's House, bringing you the smoothest jazz and the coolest guests. Right here on In Touch Radio. Welcome back to Take Your Life Back, KOGIC Style Kingdom of God International Church. We want to invite you out to 1920 Maydale Drive, right here in Tampa, Florida, where Pastor Mary Reeves and Pastor Daryl Reeves are the pastors. I got the best pastors ever. Come through, somebody. They're absolutely amazing. Yes, yes, yes. Pastor Shauna said, I had to fight all my all my life. I had to fight. <laughs> <laughs> That's why Oprah didn't take that whooping in the color purple. Oh, she said, hold on. All my life I done had to fight. And you think I'm finna let your little behind whoop me? Oh, no. Uh, I can't remember. I can't re- You told Harpo to beat me. <laughs> Harpo got to beat down, okay? Y'all, seriously, we got to stop being afraid to fight. And I'm not even just talking in the natural, but I'm talking about that spiritual fight. You know what I'm saying? We can't be afraid to fight for our destiny, for who we've been called to be. We can't be afraid to fight for purpose. We can't be afraid to, to fight for the life that God has promised us. See, I take the word of God seriously. And if he promised me that I'm the head and not the tail until I become the head, I'm fighting. 
Mm. So I can get there. So I'm getting the way. You got to move out the way. And so we've got to really understand what our rights are. Because once you know your rights, then, you know, you can exercise them. Now, listen, let me tell you something about us as a people. I'm going to talk about black folks for just a second, y'all. I'm going to mm. talk about us for a second. We'll fight over some stuff that don't matter. But the stuff that matter, we won't fight for. We'll fight over some stuff that don't matter. Mm -hmm. But the stuff that matter, we won't fight for. Oh, you, you got a case in point? I absolutely do. Okay. The people say, your child need to be on Ritalin. Your child got ADD, ADHD. They got a tension deficit disorder. And they need to put them in the slow class. Your child got a lot of energy. Your child is eating a lot of sugar. Your child is drinking a lot of sweet drinks. Of course, your child is going to be bouncing off the walls. But we will allow them to label our child, put our child in a system that says that you're somehow less than the other kids. Deny them the right to have the kind of education that they deserve and give them these classes where they getting straight A's in the classes, but they not learning nothing because they doing fourth grade work mm. in high school. Mm. But you will believe the diagnosis, accept right. the diagnosis and give them the pills, even though the pills make the child almost comatose. We have to be careful as parents now with the with this new mental health issue thing going around mm -hmm. um that they're, they're talking about it that they're, they're, they're uh looking at creating new legislation but if we're not careful our kids will be labeled with that mental health uh, me mental illness label and um it's going to hurt them down the road now check this out now there's some parents who want the label because well, they, they want to check they want to check <clears throat> No, no, you don't sacrifice your kids for a check. Mm. You sacrifice their whole destiny. Absolutely. For a check. Wow. Go to work. Mm. Sell some plates. Mm -hmm. Do something productive. Mm -hmm. But True. that's like selling them off into slavery. It is. It really is. And we got to do better. We've got to do better. You know, it, it's not an accident the things that are happening. The things that are happening are all a part of a larger plan. Remember, you know, we talk about this from school to prison pipeline. In fact, they determine the number of prisons they're going to need by the number of kids in um, certain grades, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Because they're going to funnel them straight into prison. That, Like, that's the plan. That's how they plan to keep the prison systems full. We won't fight that. Mm -mm. But we'll fight if somebody step on our shoes. White shoes. Yeah. Yeah. We'll fight if somebody accidentally bumps us. Absolutely. We'll fight if somebody take too long turning. Yeah. See, we fight for the wrong things and the wrong reasons. Mm -hmm. We need to fight for our children because our children are our future. And if our children are our future and we won't fight for them, who's going to fight for them? Mm -hmm. You got to take your life back. And when you take your life back, then you won't allow people to just listen. I'm going to tell y'all something. I remember sitting in a meeting with a, a teacher and a principal, a couple of teachers and principals, and they were talking about my youngest son, Makai. And the teacher said this. Well, he just has a tendency to go into what I like to call Makai world. What is Makai world? That's when he just, he doesn't talk. He just, he just looks at you and he won't say anything. Listen, hold on now. Hold on, hold on, hold on. What mm. you trying to say mm -hmm. about my child? Well, I'm just saying that, that he goes into Makai world and then he becomes non-responsive. Maybe he's non-responsive because the way you approach him says that you're not approachable. Maybe he's non-responsive because he doesn't feel safe. Mm. Maybe he's non-responsive because the way you handle him makes him feel less than and inadequate. Because clearly we know it's not because he's not intelligent. I see what his grades say. 
but I know I can have a conversation with the boy and the boy's using all these big words and he knows what the words mean and he uses them in the correct context. He's not dumb. He's not dumb. He's not slow. Absolutely. So there's a disconnect. Mm -hmm. And sometimes what happens is people mistake a disconnect for a lack of intelligence and a lack of intellect. Because the teaching style and the learning styles don't match. I just call that lazy. See, the teachers now, they just want to check. They're just looking for, I'm not, no, and look, I'm not talking about all teachers. Come on. I'm just talking about those teachers that are not taking on the responsibility and being accountable to their students. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about the teachers that are looking for a paycheck and nothing else. I'm talking about that teacher that's always complaining about something, uh, but uh, except what her teaching style is. Mm. They ain't complaining about that. Right. She's always doing the right thing. Mm. The kids are always wrong. Right. If the kids are always wrong year after year, semester after semester, you know, uh, group after group, then something's wrong with you. Something's wrong with you. You need to re-examine it. Yeah. Uh, do you even belong in the teaching industry? Check it out. Because our children are, like you say, they are our future. They're our future. Yeah. They're our future. And they deserve to have the opportunity to learn and to grow. Right. Right. And be able to learn in a way that works for them. Wow. But the system is designed to be the system. It's plug and play. How do we take our life back? The way we take our life back is we take education back. See, we can't as parents just rely on the school to educate our children. Mm. We've got to become active participants in their education. That means that if you work in two jobs, you got to build some time in so that you can see about your child, see about their classes. I would make a point of always going and meeting my student, my, my kids' teachers and introducing myself and popping up on them. I do pop-ups. I do drive-bys. Even if you don't make teacher parent day, you yes. can always stop when you when you got the time. When you got the time, go the time. through. Go through there. Go through. Absolutely. Go through. Just say, I just wanted to swing through and yeah. see how everything was going. I just want to peep in on my on my child. Yes. I want them to see me. Hey, I'm just checking on you. Yes. While, while they sitting there, be like, oh, man, what, what my daddy doing here? Right. I'm just checking on you. Right. And see, I've done that a lot of times. That's, but see, that's good. Yeah. And when daddy show up, stuff happens. When daddy show up, I'm just saying. stuff happens. <laughs> just saying. When I go in, I introduce myself. Hi, I'm Dr. Veronica Walters. Doctor, you heard what I said. <laughs> Don't try me. <laughs> Don't play with me nor my child. She going to cut you. And then they want to say, well, hey, Veronica, no, ma'am, no, sir. Dr. Walters. Dr. Walters or Dr. V. You can call me Dr. V. <laughs> <laughs> that doctor finna be there. Because what you're not getting ready to do is downplay. Right. Who I am. Absolutely. And don't be afraid if you have questions about what's going on with your child to go ask the questions. Yeah. And ask the hard questions, but also be willing to hear the truth. You know, you made me think about my nephew who was down here uh, going to school. He was going to, uh, what is it, Warden's? Uh, what's that journal's name? Schwarzkopf. So he was over at Schwarzkopf. Uh-huh. And... Um, he was, all of a sudden, he started doing bad in math. Mm -hmm. Right, That's his strong suit. What's, what's going on? Uh, so I went by and talked to the teacher. And I found out, thanks to um, Men of Vision. Uh-huh. You know what I'm talking yes. about. Yes. Yes. Ross. Ross. Yes. He was there. Uh, but I found out there was a, that was, uh, he was, my, my nephew was doing the problem the way he knew how to do it. Came up with the same answer. It just wasn't the way that the teacher, teacher wanted it. Wanted it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What's up with that? Well, so you, you're gonna fail him for that? See, and, you and gonna and reduce his grade? Listen. Why don't y'all come to some? I mean, happy medium. A, a happy medium. Right. If the answer is the same, what's the problem? Right. Right. So, so listen. You know, I just had this conversation with my son Adam talking about math. I said, Adam, listen. If you understand the formula then it doesn't matter what situation you're in. You'll always be able to get the answer. Oh, I know what he wanted. He wanted him to show his, his work. work. That's what it was. Show he your was work. He's doing it in his head. He's doing it in his head. Yes. Show your work. So yeah. that that's a battle that I have with Adam. He's like, but mom, I, I know what the answer is. I know you know, but let's say you make a mistake. There's no way to trace it in your head. In your head. 
So all I'm doing is helping save you some some time because if you mess up, you don't know where you messed up. Right. So now you're confused yeah. because you wouldn't write it down. Yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, 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 now, yeah. it's some stuff you can just do in your head. I don't have a problem with it. Mm-hmm. You ain't calculus, bro. <laughs> it's calculus. <laughs> you might mess up on some calculus. <laughs> you, I'm just saying, you might mess up. Yeah. So because you might mess up, just write it down. Show your work. So that you know the the, the way that it works. Mm-hmm. And you all the same is true in our lives. Show your work. True. Write it down. When you're taking your life back, when you're eliminating fear, then what you have to do is be able to show your process. And something happens when you begin to write it down and you begin to check things off. Your confidence begins to grow and you feel more powerful and empowered. Don't let the enemy or the inner me cause you to not see your destiny because you've chosen not to do what you need to do. No, no, no. Write the vision and make it plain so that they who read it might run and not faint. Thank you for tuning in to Take Your Life Back, courtesy of KOGIC, Kingdom of God International Church, located at 1920 Maydale Drive right here in beautiful, sunny Tampa, Florida. Come visit us. Our services start at 12.30 p.m. on Sundays, 7.30 p.m. on Wednesday night for Bible study. Be in the place. I promise you, you won't regret it. Love you guys to life and life more abundant. Be blessed.